One of the new thought processes that has to come along with Ableton Live is not only think in terms of clips, but thinking in terms of scenes. And scenes are collections of clips, and we see them in a bar like this. This is second scene, third scene. So now when I launch scene one, the only clip that's in play is here. And when I launch scene two, it stops. Now let's watch that again. Now watch this square when I launch scene two. Now when it flashes, that is a stop clip button and the flashing indicate it's waiting to stop the next clip. Now the reason it's waiting is because it too is governed by the global quantize here. As we discuss this more, you'll understand that we have every scene, clip, and normally all the clips will follow this, but you can override that. So the stop clip button will tell any audio on that track to cease playing. Let's launch this one down here. And even though I launched this scene above it, it still has a stop clip button. So it's looking for anything in this entire track. So let's launch scene two again. And so you can hear right away that it stops above or below. It doesn't matter. Now another thing we want to start thinking about is experimenting and finding collections. So I'm going to launch this clip and experiment with some of these drums now. Bringing up the drum volume. Okay, so I'm going with this one. I'm going to set it to play, stopping with spacebar. I'm going to set this one to play on the second scene. But I want this cello part to keep playing, so I need to remove or get rid of this stop clip button. I'm going to right click, remove stop button, and now when I launch scene two, if there's no stop button in that column, then this will continue playing. Let's watch. Launching scene one, and scene two. Now I'm going to bring up another cello part, I'm going to toggle over to that with scene three. Now notice the stop clip button here stop this junk drums from continuing its loop. If I don't want that to happen again, I'm going to remove the stop button. So now I can see I've got certain combinations in here. I can also remove the stop button above and this allows me to move up and down and not cancel out my drums. So I'm going to stop all clips before I start. Stop button to go back to the beginning and launch scene one. And now I'm going to add in scene two. Launching now. So no stop button. This keeps going. This is added in. Let's launch scene three. So this part stops. Again, only one clip per track can play. Now if I come back up to the top and launch scene one, percussion will stay in and this will switch to the other cello part. Now we can randomly add in other parts and see how we like them. I'm going to check out the different bass part. Okay, and I'm stopping. Another thing we can do is if we find a collection of clips that we work together well across tracks, we're going to use this insert and then go capture and insert scene. Now what will happen is that any clip that currently is illuminated with its launch button will be collected into a new scene and added below. Let's do that now. Insert, capture, and insert scene. So we're going to take now this collection. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to select all these with the shift key and pull them down below. So now we're starting to think in terms of scenes. Let's try this drum part. This bass part nothing here. See what this one sounds like? Okay, let's say I like this combination. Again, I can do the insert scene, capture and insert. And it goes below my current position. 
Okay, so that's a way to get scenes going. And again, think in terms of stop buttons. And of course, if you launch any scene, I'll just begin playback. And moving clips around a little bit here. Bring the volume up a little bit. So now if I stop, you might think when I spacebar again that nothing's going to play back except for the first scene. That's incorrect. What's going to play is anything that's currently illuminated as a launch ready clip. Here's spacebar. So we did go back to the beginning, but it played the current scene or clips that were selected. Now if you launch an empty scene like a, it's full of stop clip buttons. The clips stop playback, but the song is still moving forward. So again, beginning to think in scenes and work with clips and stop clip buttons is a new thought process that needs to go on inside Ableton Live. Another little tip I want to talk about is as you're experimenting, I'm going to launch these all. Here's scene seven. Notice these track activate buttons. They relate to the F keys on your keyboard. So F1, we'll turn this one on and off. F2, F3. So that also can assist you in finding out whether clips are really working together or not. Turn one off and then listen and you'll be ready to go. Okay, these are some crucial thinking process for Ableton Live.